buddy. It got chilly last night, but not in my hammock. Good morning and welcome to The Real Outdoors. My name is Tim and we're going to talk about camping, hiking, hunting, and all that encompasses The Real Outdoors. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to stay warm in cold weather in one of these, a hammock. I know a lot of people are moving to hammocks from tents and hammocks come with some of their own challenges, including how to stay warm in cold weather. And we're gonna talk about how to do that in today's video. Unlike tents, hammocks sit up off the ground. So there's a space underneath the hammock and that gives wind and air the opportunity to move above and below the hammock. And that creates something called CBS or cold butt syndrome. And whoo, buddy, does it get cold if you don't take the necessary precautions to keep yourself warm in your hammock on those cold winter nights that we have coming up. The main thing you really have to do to keep yourself warm in a hammock is really no different than a tent. You need some kind of insulation underneath your body. It's just a little bit different because in a hammock, if you laid down on, say, you know, your sleeping bag for insulation, or sometimes even, even a blow up air mattress for insulation, you're gonna compress that insulation and not get a whole lot of warmth out of it. In my opinion, the best thing you can do, the number one thing you can do for insulation in a hammock underneath your body, unlike in a tent with an air pad, is an under quilt. An under quilt is basically half a sleeping bag and it goes on the outside of the hammock. And that way the insulation in the quilt or the sleeping bag or the half a sleeping bag, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't get compressed because you're up on top of it. Now that does present some challenges. You have to set the under quilt up right. You don't want holes on either end where your head and foot are. So then it creates a giant wind tunnel going down the length of the hammock. You also don't want it so tight up against the hammock that you are compressing the insulation in that under quilt. You basically wanna sit down in your hammock like I am and just barely touch the under quilt. And so then you know you have it set up perfectly. Now I have added some shock cord to the side of my under quilt on both sides. I just run it through loops on the edge of the under quilt. That helps keep it in place so it doesn't slip around and come out from underneath you in the middle of the night. That can also happen if you have your under quilt too tight against your hammock before you get into it. So like I said, you wanna play around with the settings on your hammock and your under quilt to make sure it's sitting just right underneath your hammock so that when you sit in it, you are just barely touching the under quilt itself. And like I said, you wanna tighten up each end at the foot and the head to make sure that it's not open there either. Again, this is gonna take some adjustment and figuring out how it works. Sometimes the under quilt is just not enough insulation. I've camped down to the 20s here in Florida in my hammock. That's about as cold as I've been. I have camped in much colder weather in a tent and even cowboy camping up in Minnesota. I'll put a link in the eye in the sky to give you some of those cold weather tips because you can use those in hammock camping as well. But when it does get too cold for just my under quilt, I will use a closed cell foam sleeping pad. I have tried air mattresses. I don't feel like they work as well as the closed cell foam. You know, the Z-shaped sleeping pads from like Thermarest and things like that. And I'll put links to all these down in the description. So don't worry if you miss something. But I use one of those Z-shaped reflective closed cell foam pads from Thermarest. I put that in my hammock. I put it on the diagonal because that's the way I'm gonna sleep in my hammock. And then that gives me an extra layer of insulation along with my under quilt. And I can tell you that makes my hammock extremely warm in the winter. So just those two things make a huge difference. That covers the insulation underneath your body, but what do you do for insulation on the top? Well, I've talked about my enlightened equipment, top quilt, down top quilt. That's pretty much all I use for top insulation. If you can afford it, go down. It's a fantastic insulator for the top. I love the top quilt. You wanna to be careful using regular sleeping bags in your hammock. 
You can use them like a top quilt, like just kind of zip up the foot box, stick your feet in and use it like a blanket or a top quilt. I did that for a long time. However, you do run the risk with those zippers of tearing a hole in your hammock. And so that's why I, part of the reason I moved to a top quilt and part of the reason you want to be careful with sleeping bags is those zippers can tear your hammock and then you're looking for a new hammock. I have reviewed the Enlightened Equipment top quilt that I use, so I will put a link to that video in the eye in the sky as well, so you can check that out. But that's pretty much all I use for insulation on top. Next up, let's talk about layers. As I mentioned, I use a top quilt. Top quilts don't come with hoods like mummy sleeping bags do, and so that's why I use this down hood when it gets really cold to keep my head warm. This is a cheap down hood. It's just the hood off of like a puffy jacket is essentially what it is, but it covers your neck and your whole head. You can really cinch it up. Just have that air hole there to keep every part of your head and neck warm. And it's only like 20 bucks. It's not a big deal, but it really makes a huge difference. And it kind of acts as a pillow when you're sleeping in your hammock too. It's nice and cushy. It also blocks out some of the sound. So if you have noisy neighbors when you're out camping, it helps block out some of the sound. I just absolutely love my hood and it packs down into this bag. In addition to that, I always have something like this on when I'm sleeping in really cold weather, which is basically just a fleece pullover. This is a gridded fleece pullover. Um, I don't remember the brand, but like I said, I'll put a link down in the description or, you know, like one of those Patagonia pullovers, just some kind of fleece mid layer really makes a difference in keeping you warm on those cold winter nights in your hammock. You put all of that together, your under quilt, your sleeping pad in your hammock, your top quilt, your layering, and you can stay warm down to pretty cold weather in your hammock. The other thing is if it really gets cold and all of that insulation and layers isn't keeping you warm, you can always add a second underquilt, which I've done as well. This is a 20 degree underquilt. I also have a 40 degree underquilt. You can combine the two and get even more insulation underneath your hammock for even more warmth when it gets really, really cold you know, down below freezing type cold. The one last thing I would mention as far as keeping yourself warm in your hammock is a tight tarp pitch in the winter. What do I mean by that? Pitch your tarp tight to the ground to prevent as much wind as possible from coming underneath your hammock and into your bug net. This also means you kind of need to know what direction the wind is coming from. You don't want your tarp to create a giant wind tunnel coming through your feet and head areas. So you want to have your tarp blocking the prevailing wind from hitting your hammock. So that'll make a big difference too. You can also buy covers for your hammock. Instead of a bug net, you would have a solid nylon cover for a lot of hammocks out there. A lot of them have that type of cover. Then you kind of run into some condensation issues sometimes. I've never needed to use a winter cover. The tarp is more than enough. And like I said, you just pitch that tarp nice and tight to the ground as close as you can get it. And then that'll keep that prevailing wind from coming through as much. It's always gonna come through. It's always gonna be an issue and you're always gonna need some type of insulation underneath your hammock or underneath your body. But pitching that tarp tight to the ground will also help you keep you warm in those cold temperatures that we're gonna hit coming up this winter. Give me a thumbs up if you got something out of this video and be sure to click that red subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you get notified of all our latest content here on The Real Outdoors. I'm getting ready to go on my annual Texas hunting trip, so be on the lookout for a new Texas hunting video coming up very soon. And I look forward to seeing you in The Real Outdoors.